Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the StarCraft 2 finally at the WCG 2012 in Kunshan, China. I'm Kaldo, and with me is Wolf, and we are here to cast the Protoss vs. Protoss Grand Final between Startail Parting and Adel Scott. Yep, it's time for Korea against France. There are the players there on stage, Parting to the left, and Adel Scott, of course, to the right. Harding, winning BWC, wants to take his second world championship here. And I have to say, I think this may be Adel Scott's best finish ever that I can think of so far in StarCraft 2. Yeah, Adel Scott definitely in a, a very good mood now. He's in the final and he actually told me earlier, he came over to the commentator booth and talked a little bit to me. He thinks he has a good chance against Parting here. He wants to play a couple of timings. He wants to make sure that he gets the Korean player early on. And he said that he's pretty confident. He trained a lot for this. But of course, he is up against one of the best players in the world. Absolutely, man. And not only one of the best players in the world, but such a great Protoss versus Protoss player. It's this guy sitting in this booth right now. It's Star Tails Parting, representing Korea here. He already was able to take the finals of the Blizzard World Championship Series. And I mean, he wants to do it again right now, yeah. taking out Mexed and of course Combat X in the semis and quarters. Yeah, two Protoss players, and also what Wolf just mentioned in the BWC Grand Final, he had to face another Protoss player, he had to face Creator. In the mirror match, Harding is nearly undefeatable. Yeah. And we have now Daybreak coming up. Map number one in this best of three Harding versus Adel Scott, and both of them are ready. Harding, of course, is in a really good mood here. Once again, he finds himself in the final. <laughs> and the observer tells him to look into the camera because he's currently on screen and he immediately dodges. Yeah. He is, don't uh, be shy, Marty. Don't be shy. This guy is actually rich with all the money he's been winning and he wants to get a little bit more of that. And of course, the gold medal for his country is always very nice to have, very important. And uh, this guy, I would say, by far the favorite. I mean, considering especially he's been playing only Bros vs. Bros the past, past few rounds, he's up against Adel Scott. The French player over here on the right side of the stage. And I'm liking that look he's given the camera. Yeah, he's confident. He mentioned earlier he feels that he can take this and we will find out if it's true. He was able to defeat Lowly in the semifinal and took out Phoenix in the quarters. He dropped one single game in his group stage. He lost to uh, Combat X actually, but he was not too upset about this loss because that meant that he will face Parting a little bit later. Yeah, he doesn't have to face Parting until the very end. And I don't blame him, man. Avoiding Parting and Protoss versus Protoss is definitely something any smart person would do. Yeah, that's so true. And that's gonna... I mean, this is going to be a great game. I'm really looking forward to it, especially since Adel Scott seems to be very, very confident going into this series. But Harding, he's the final boss. He's the one player that you have to beat. The Koreans are dominating in the StarCraft 2 once again, where so far WCG has been all about the Chinese teams, actually. Absolutely. Uh, you know, even like said, making it to the, the semifinals yeah. is very representative of China's skill here so far in this tournament. You mentioned it before, map number one is going to be Daybreak, a top map for Blink Stalkers for expansion type Blink play. But we have seen players go for aggressive builds just off of one base to try to kill their opponent using Blink Stalkers here. What Adel Scott told me earlier is that he wants to avoid maps, and this is one of the reasons why he vetoed Cloud Kingdom, where Parting can use his Blink Stalkers. He does not want to face Parting with Blink Stalkers because he says the micro of this guy is just too intense. He is so sick, I don't want to play Cloud Kingdom against him. Yeah, I would definitely wouldn't either. Parting's mark, we saw some of it yesterday. We may see some of it in this series. It's just absolutely incredible. It seems like he does doesn't even need anything but stalkers, even if his opponent's army is much larger. He's just so good at controlling his. A little bit of funny banner going on between the players in the lobby actually right now, chatting about Tokyo. Haters for trying to be funny, um, and then uh, suddenly Parting is thinking he's talking about Tokyo. It's a little bit hard to explain right now, but both of them are just fooling around a little bit. It's quite funny to see that they are in such good spirits here. Yeah, not too tensed up, and that will certainly make up for a good game. Look at that crowd. There are so many people here in the venue. This is just one stage. There's another one that has just as many people, if not more, on the other side of the venue. And there are just so many people here waiting to see all these games. StarCraft 2, Grand Final starting up here. Parting against Adele Scott, Korea versus France. Cast by fight, Calder and Wolf. We are live and good to go here at the WCG 2012, the StarCraft II Grand Final. They are Star Tales parting at the bottom left of Daybreak, our Protoss player in red, the Korean favorite here. Yep. And there's a 
opponent, of course, to the top right, representing France. It's Adel Scott. There he is. The French player here, and of course, this best of three is brought to you by Colin Wolf here at the WCG 2012. And let's find out what the two of them are doing. Adel Scott said it earlier, he doesn't want to play face parting sling stalker play. This is why he vetoed Cloud Kingdom. He said, I don't want to play him on this map. I've seen him play against Mixed, and I really, really try to make him play in different strategy. I'm a little bit afraid he might completely out micro him. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you play against someone like Harding, uh, a lot of players will try to hit them on timing attacks where you're playing with units where you hit your opponent where he's off guard and it's not about the micro necessarily. It's about he doesn't have enough units to hold your attack. So even if he micros his hard out, he's not going to be able to hold that push. That's something that we often see from, from Europeans against Koreans and other tournaments as well. I still have this kind of a bet going on with Parting. He actually said that if he wins WCG as well, he's going to give me his mouse, his famous pink mouse as a present. And I went to, into his... He told me that like two days ago. And uh, early on, I went into his booth and uh, wished him good luck for the match. And he turns around, sees me, starts smiling, points at his mouse and says like, soon it's going to be yours. <laughs> <laughs> he's really confident here, and he should be. He is the one player that he... You have to beat if you want to be the World Cyber Games champion. He took down x he took down Combat X, he took down in the BWC finals, of course, um, Greater Prime, and now he's up against another Protoss player. Every single time Parting plays in the final, he is, is playing a mirror match. Absolutely. It's just, um, in China especially, it seems like these tournaments are having Protoss versus Protoss finals, and Parting is always there um, at the top. And, a lot of Frost players uh, have been doing extremely well in these international tournaments, especially these worldwide yeah. tournaments. You know, talking a little bit about the, uh, sorry, WCG in general, we had the last year's winner was actually Korea, and uh, Remind was the one who gave the trophy back to uh, WCG, and this time it's probably going to be the Chinese who are going to win the entire tournament. So far we had a lot of China versus China competitions. The grand final in Dota versus China versus China game. The grand final in Dota 2 was also China versus China. We had in World of Tanks the China versus Russia map match, and later on in Warcraft it's also going to be two Chinese players facing yeah. each other. It's a little bit crazy. They're really dominating here on their home turf. Yeah, imagine if Maxeda made it to the finals here in oh, StarCraft. Wow. It would have been even different. It would have been crazy. This pro barely gets in here for partying. He wants to see what Adele is doing. Adele is hiding a Stargate, oh. though. And this is really interesting. This could be for several different things. It's probably going to be Phoenixes, but there are some Void Ray builds that do exist where you charge up Void Rays on your pylon and then go into the main base. Do you actually think it's going to be Phoenix? I feel with Phoenixes being this fast, hiding that at the bottom uh, left doesn't make that much sense. With the Void Ray, he has, you know, he bridges the time with the Void Ray a lot better. Could be Phoenix, but I still think he might go for the Void Ray timing that you uh, talked about yeah. earlier. I think I, I'm starting to feel Void Rays, but that build has fallen so out of style that yeah. I'm not sure exactly how he's going to execute this here. Adam Scott told me earlier when he came over that he uh, is trying to go for a few timing attacks that he wants to play. He knows that a straight up game is going to be really difficult for him. And there it is, it's going to be Phoenix. No Void Ray. He is going for the Phoenix build and Parting is scouting. Parting yeah. will actually see this. He's going to be able to see it. He's not going to be able to, to kill this pylon because Adele does have some units on the middle of the map walking over towards this Stalker. Uh, impressive scouting here. And of course, he's going to attack. He's going to attack the pylon immediately where the rest of the Stalkers he needs to send them over. And there is Stalker number two. But Adel Scott is moving in with his own Stalker and Zealot. Yeah, he needs to pick up the he full health stalker. That's exactly what he wants to do. But he needs to warp in some units here. His warp game research is not done, and Parting is actually going to push him back here. Yeah, Parting definitely going to push him back. There are a couple of additional Phoenix now coming out. In total, he has two so far, but it's, of course, really dangerous. If this pylon dies, a lot of momentum will be lost for the French player. Yeah, and oh, wow, it looks like it's certainly going to die. He can't even save it. It's too low on hit points. There it goes. It falls down. Another Phoenix ah. so close to coming out, but not quite. And Adele's going to lose this Stalker as well here. Yeah, he's definitely going to lose it. Those Phoenixes don't have the energy anymore for oh, another Oh, wow. has pylons in his main base. Oh, my God. I didn't even see this. Oh, That's this is, crazy. This is terrible. He's already got forward units. And the Phoenixes, since they used their energy earlier, can't really be of much use here. And the production is now, of course, way better for Parting. Only one gate for Edel Scott. He tries to get two additional ones. But with the early Stargate, he invested a lot of resources, and now he's paying the price. Absolutely. There it is. GG, well played. And Harding takes early lead in the series, conquering game number one with great scouting. Yeah, that was really the key in this game. Him scouting the Stargate, that was the most important thing. And just look at him. He has a lead here. Adel Scott, he's a little bit shaken. He thought this might work. Yeah, you know, it was a cool strategy. 
Well, I got really excited when I thought there was a possibility for some sort of Void Ray play here, but, you know, at the end of the day, because he got scouted, he was not able to keep that pile alive. If that third Phoenix had come out, and if you were a little bit faster with the Stalkers, maybe he could have saved it and then taken the lead, but Harding was just too good, too wise for him in game number one. Antigua Shipyard is going to be the second map. Both players now starting the lobby and Harding already in with the early lead here at the World Cyber Game 2012 Grand Final in StarCraft 2. Adel Scott is ready, just joined the lobby. He is good to go. Let's see what he has planned for Antigua Shipyard. Yeah, this map is a great map for Blink Stalkers, yeah. and that's something that he wanted to avoid potentially playing against is some sort of micro-oriented strategy from Harding. Harding loves his Blink Stalker Observer expansion builds on this map. And I would be really shocked if we don't see that from him in game number two. Yeah, we have Harding. Pretty confident here, of course, in the trophy. That's what. That's exactly what Korea wants to have, but it looks like the trophy is going to the Chinese this year. Antigua Shipyard, here's our map. Map number two and the best of three. Yeah, and as you can see, there's a ton of service area on each of the four bases to blink into the main base and harass your opponent if he tries to move out. So, it's so... It's such a good map, you have to be careful on it though. If you're the defending player, your opponent's going Blink Stalkers against you, you have to split your units. You have to be very map aware, and you also have to be very good at micro. Yeah, you definitely have to. And this micro, these micro fights, this is what Adel Scott is a bit afraid of. He saw Parting's micro in the games that he played at the WCG so far, and he said, This is what I try to avoid. He is part E Parting. It's just so awesome. It's going to be very tough for me when it comes to an even army fight, and it all comes down to the micro. Yeah. Well, the countdown is finished here. We are going into game number two. Startail Parting is already up one in the series. Can he close it out or will Adele bring it back? This is the WCG 2012 Grand Final with Calder and Wolf. To the top of the map, we have the player in red, our Protoss from Korea. It is Startail Parting. Here we have him on camera, the Korean player. One of the only Korean players that was able to make it out of the group stage, Marine King and Yongwa both lost. And he's up against the French player. Here on screen is Adel Scott. Our Protoss in blue at the bottom of Antigua Shipyard. Representing France and uh, it's a great tournament for him overall. Taking a lot of important wins to make it here at the Grand Finals. Yeah, also gaining a lot of respect. He was always a player in Europe a little bit on the edge. Uh, had a hard time making it into finals but still getting good results. Another player who has the same issue is, for example, Bishu. Always ending up in group stages, doing really well, but falling short when it comes down to the important matches and then not able to get out of those group stages into the important rounds with, uh, yeah, just has to fight with his nerves quite a bit. But now we have a Protoss vs. Pros between France and Korea. And you already mentioned, Wolf, that on a map like Antigua Shipyard, what we might see here are the Blink Stalkers. Yeah. Harding loves to do this build where he gets an early uh, Twilight Council, get that blink, then gets, of course, Observers out to be able to blink into the main base. And then once his opponent tries to expand, Harding just starts picking off probes, picking off pylons, gateways, whatever he can find, and just eventually wears him down while he has his expansion up for free. If Adele wants to move across the map to counteract that, then he can actually just go for a base trade and win with the superior mobility. Adele was really confident in his builds, and he used on Daybreak a forward with Stargate, tried to proxy Stargate, the party scouted. Now we are on a Tiga shipyard, and if Adele wants to be tricky once again, I'm really interested in what exactly he's going to do here. Or will he just try to play it standard? Will he go for a two base play, trying to defend with a robo against the Blink Stalkers? We're going to find out pretty soon. Parting now with a double gas. With three in both gas, yeah. in fact. So not your normal two and two builds. So he's definitely going to build that's very heavy in gas, which I feel really lends itself towards that, that Blink Stalker Observer build that we may see. Because you need that yeah. Twilight Council and the Robo. It's a lot of gas needed for that tech. Exactly. Without the robotics, you can't have the Observer. And the Observer is just a necessity. You need to have the high ground vision to jump up those cliffs and make sure that you pressure your opponent, not only at the natural, but also in the main base, and always keep him running, keep him bouncing between the two bases if he's going to expand. Yeah. Now the second gate goes down for Adele. This means he's going to have some pressure ability with his first three stalkers. He's going to start stalker number one in just a second on that first gate. Chrono Boost Warp Gate research. Mm, Parting actually investing the first 100 gas that he has here straight into the first sentry. Yep. And doing some great scouting here, just making sure yep. there's no pylon for warp ins. I actually asked Adel Scott if he uh, thinks about going uh, cheesy on Parting, and he said, like, oh, well, I might try to hit a few timings, but I'm not going to go for cheese strategies. 
And now suddenly with the first sentry that will enable parting to block the ramp, he goes into the Stargate tag. We don't see him with the Twilight Council and Blink, but he goes straight into the tag on the double gas that we saw earlier with the three probes instead of only two. He starts to use the strategy that Aeos got executed in that number one. Absolutely. Uh, though this is a very scary strategy because it has its weak points for sure, but the thing is, if you don't know it's coming, there's different ways to execute. There's the scouting Phoenix build where you send your first Phoenix in to see what's going on, but it doesn't look like Parting's doing that based on this rally here. There's also the build where you wait for a few Phoenixes to go for the economy. There's also even the Phoenixes with three or four gateways where you try to kill your opponent with the attack. And even if he finds out about the first oh. Phoenix, he's not going to know what happens next. Adel Scott expands. He goes into Nexus. He does not add a Twilight Council. This is, of course, the risk that Parting runs. If Adel Scott plays a one base Blink, uh, Blink Stalker play, then he has a bit of trouble with those Phoenixes. If he's caught off guard, then he will lose them. But right now, he has a lot of momentum going for him. Adel Scott adds the Twilight Council, but not after he built down the expansion. Yeah. And the Twilight Council is, of course, the key here to get the Blink Stalkers to defend the, the Phoenix. The Phoenix is so fast, even if you have Blink, you're probably not going to kill one in the first wave. You have to wait until you can start to wear down those hit points and eventually kill them. But at that point, it's, the damage has already been done. So Phoenixes are such a, a scary unit to face in this matchup. And Adele doesn't even really know what he's up against just yet. Yeah, Parning is moving out with two, doesn't wait for additional Phoenixes. He's moving in right now, gets the scouting information, knows already about the Twinal Council, sees an opening and takes down at least two officers. Yep. And there he goes in for the scout on the Nexus. He will see it. He also sees the Twilight Council researching Blink, so he's got all the information he needs now. Yeah, three Phoenixes for him now. Needs to be a little bit careful. Nice. Sees those Stalkers on the low ground and make sure that those Phoenixes are not caught off position. He's coming around for another pass. Considers to kill one more probe, but decides not to. You know, he's already seen the Nexus of his opponent, so he immediately decides to grab his own Nexus back home. Here he is, going to grab one more probe and get out without losing a single Phoenix. Yeah, well done here. Yeah, losing the shields and a couple of hit points. Expanding now as well. So far, he killed three probes. He's trying to get in again and takes down another one. Probe number four dies to Harding's Phoenix pressure. Really nicely done. His Nexus is halfway done. But Adele has the ability to mine from two bases right now. He's got a better economy at this very moment in time. Harding, though, with the robotic stuff, has the better overall tech. He's yeah. going into immortal production, so Blink Stalkers are not going to be an issue for him. And what Parting, what Parting, of course, knows is that with the Nexus down and no Robo in sight, there is not going to be the threat of the Blink Stalkers blinking up in the main base. So really nice pressure here by Parting, using those Phoenixes to keep Adel Scott just on his toes, making sure that he has to bounce between the two bases. Every single time we have then suddenly one pro being off, picked off, maybe a second one. Nice zoning out by Parting here doing a good job in the early game. Yep, one more again. Probo get taken out. He's just doing this all, of course, with three Phoenix. Even with Blink, you see, it's just so hard to kill that Phoenix. Yeah. And Parting is preparing. He has two Immortals now. Immortal number one. Oh, oh. a misstep here. He will lose one. Yeah, that was him overextending a little bit. He did not think that Aeol Scott would actually follow him out of his own base. Oh, and now he's actually going to potentially lose another one if he's not careful. Yeah. He needs to get way away from those Stalkers. Close call. Uh -oh. Blink. Aeol Scott is on the hunt. Yeah, he really wants to catch those Phoenix. The Phoenix is probably not going to be able to get anything done here. He may even trade them ah. for a probe, and this is intentional. He wants to trade them for that probe here and just get out. He knows they're not really very useful otherwise. <laughs> Will he catch that? I don't think so. Nah, it's going to be close. Oh, look at that bait oh. by Parting. He's teasing them. <laughs> he really wants that Phoenix, doesn't he? Even warps in another set of Stalkers. Both of those players really focused, as you could just see. Gates coming down for both of them, uh, also Immortal number 3 now in the game, the fourth Immortal being built. Unfortunately, we don't have a glimpse of the probe count here, but we see Ailes Scott now moving across the map. Yeah. That's not going to do too much it's against not, three Immortals. It's yeah, not going to be very effective here, but it's it's a cool pressure move. He doesn't really have to overly commit to this. And he also doesn't have the high ground vision. We talked about the lack of a robotics and therefore the Observer before. But now here come the Stalkers, a lot of Immortals though. And Parting is very cautious here. He knows that the Blinks are there. And with a very heavy stock account like this, Adele Scott can actually try to make something work against a heavy Zealot army. But once the Immortals close the distance, he can't really fight. Yeah. Against the Immortals, he can't do too much. And there are four of them already. Yeah, even a fifth one being made right now. Five more Stalkers coming out for Adel, though he really wants to heavily commit to this attack. And the attack uh, the attack is so much better for Parting. Here comes Adel Scott, but gets four Immortals. There's just no chance. With the four Spears on the other hand, he traps the Zealots. Yeah. But there is still a gap that Parting can use to retreat. Absolutely. And you know, if you use those horses to make it so the Immortals don't fight, that's when you can actually start to pick off units. That's what he wants to try here. He's working on some Zealots to try to help out as well. And Wolf, he has to. There's no Robo. He really dedicates all his resources to his attack, and he's moving in already. 
We have immediately the break up with all of those stalks. Now it comes down to Micro. Will Party be able to pick up the stalkers with these Immortals? It looks likely, and Adele has to back up here. There's too many Immortals. Zealot Warpin, though, could be a problem for Party. He needs to back up and get some more units out of his own. He's in a lot of trouble here if he doesn't actually get some good force shields to protect those Immortals. He needs to make sure that the Immortals deal with the Stalkers. At the same time though, Immortal number one is already being focused. The second one is dying as well. The probes have been pulled. Harding in a little bit of trouble, but he's forcing Adel Scott back. Though all the probes have been pulled off the mineral line in order to assist in this fight. Yeah, this is a great attack here by Adel, but Harding has another Immortal out now. He's got to make sure he deals with the Zelts. The Stalkers link to the side and too yeah, much. Harding needs to be uh, targeting here, but it looks like you're exactly right. There's just too much to defend. If he targets well with the Immortals, he should be able to force those Stalkers back, and that's exactly what happens. Adel Scott is now down to 50 supply, warps in another round of Zealots, wants to pressure up Harding, but the Korean Protoss player is up in supply, has a good economy going for him, and more important, the better tech. Yeah, the better tech indeed. A third Immortal comes down here to join, and with that, it should be enough to push Adel back. Adel probably wants to retreat as soon as he sees his Immortals coming down here, but he doesn't have anything to fall back to. He doesn't have any real retreat he can actually use. There's a lot of army supply for Adel Scott though. Once again, parting with a focus. Zealot versus Zealot and now those Immortals edge forward trying to get into range against the Stalkers and Sentries. Yeah, and Harding moves in here. Good force shields to slow him down. You know, consistently in these fights, Adel has the Guardian shield up and Harding does not. And I think that's starting to make a pretty big difference in this fight. And in fact, Adel takes the yeah. supply lead here. You're so right, Wolf. Adel now in the supply lead, but he is very, very low on a Zealot. Only four left. On the other hand, Harding, he has only those Immortals. The Immortals need to do the damage, but they're still being pressured by the Zealots. Now, finally the time. And here comes Adel Scott with a desperate attempt to move forward. Blinks in and loses a lot of those. Stalkers immediately. Party moving down, trying to get into a good position. Party may need to back up here though, because with the next round of warp, it's going to be a little vulnerable. He wants to fight those warping in units. The Immortals are so slow. He's on the retreat. Nice micro pulls back the weak wow. Immortal. And the last of the Stalkers for Adel are dead. And I think this may be it. This may just be it. Well, 59 supply against 50, but Party is moving in. And this is so much DPS against the uh, Stalkers, against the Sentries. But now suddenly the force field on the ramp. The Stalkers trying to hunt down uh, the Zealots. Trying down, down these emotes. The last stock is about to die. Adel Scott down to 46 supply against 54. Parting is losing another immortal. No, he's not. He's not indeed a very close call there, though. And it looks like with the warp ins here, he's actually just gonna fight with these zealots. He blinks in, he takes out the immortal. And another suddenly immortal, the second though. one comes off the robotics. Yeah, this was such a close battle. It was wow. so tense. But it looks like he could actually finally take out that forward warp in point and eliminate the pressure that Adele is putting on him here. These micro fights, Parting is just the superior micro player. This is what Adel Scott said before the games, and now it's proved to be true. Parting is just on a roll. It takes out the last stalker, and this is it, I think. I am absolutely in agreement. You see the frustration on Adel's face there as he is about to have to type GG. He's now down 20 supply. He still has his expansion up. But I mean, what can he really fall back on here? There's the robotic support bay going down for Parting. He's yeah. taken the next step of the tech here. Adel Scott might be able to drag this out a little bit longer, but Parting already with the tech into the robotic bay. He wants to have those colossi. He wants to make sure that he crushes force fields, and then he will be able to move up the ramp. For now, Adel Scott relying on a few sentries, trying to build probes, increase the probe count, get the better economy. With those sentries, he can, of course, force field Parting. But is Adel Scott really able to take this game? It looks doubtful. It looks very doubtful. You know, Parting is not actually going to commit here. I feel he wants to wait for a few more units. He could even wait for his Colossi. Yeah, if you look at the worker count here, you can see the probe count is fairly similar. Parting still the lead there. Both the Immortals he's got at the front with the Colossi he's about to have out. There's nothing Adele has for the late game. It's all about the tech indeed. The late game, this is where Adel Scott will struggle. Yes, for now he can hold his own. He can hold the high ground. But as soon as we have the first Colossi, as soon as we have extended Thermal Parting will be in the lead. I would be very surprised if Parting would lose this game with the lead that he has. Yeah, I mean, he's just going to play this safe too. He, he would be, even be surprised. He's like, well, I'm just going to sit back yeah. now, take the Watchtower, wait for my first Colossus. Adel either has to get a late Colossus where I'm already going to have an advantage, or he has to attack me here where I'm going to have the advantage on top of this high ground. I'm going to have my Colossus walking across the map, and we are going to have that fight now in the middle of the map. Adel Scott trying to move out. He is hoping for a mistake. This is what it comes down to. Adel Scott hoping for a mistake. That's all he needs. That's all he needs for Christmas here. Here come the force fields. The stocks are being trapped. Harding doesn't have blink. 
loses a lot of them, and those Immortals look a little bit silly behind the Force Fields. Yeah. They can't get into range. But as the Force Fields fade, we see that Harden can now move his Zealots in, and the Immortals are going to town here. He needs to target them, and he does. 60 supply, Fatal Scott losing more and more Stalkers trying to get out of there, losing another Sentry. GG! Well played. Harding wins the WCG StarCraft 2 Grand Final with a convincing 2-0 over the French bonus player. Yeah, making it look easy, in fact, with how well he was able to defend those attacks. And only Protoss can do something. I didn't see what that sign said. But congratulations to Harding and Korea. He brings out the flag here. He is the champion. He's won both World Leagues in China now, the BWC and the WCG. This guy may be the best Protoss in the world. I think it's pretty tough to argue against it. He definitely loves Shanghai. He won here two weeks ago, the BWC. Now he's the victor in the WCG Grand Final. He is such a boss. A 2-0 victory. And Korea, they had a few upsets. Marine King lost, Yongwa lost, but Harding, he came through. The Korean player, oh my god, and here comes Adel Scott to shake hands. Yeah, he wants to, of course, be very sportsmanlike here. Adel very known for this, and, you know, despite the fact he wasn't able to take the final, this is a great finish for him. He took second place, and congratulations to Parting. I think I have a new mouse. I think so, man. It looks <laughs> like it. Oh, man, that's what, that was something. Parting here with a victory, and of course, guys, this is not the last game that we see today at the WCG. No, we are heading into Crossfire next, the Crossfire Grand Final, and later on today we will see the Warcraft 3 Final, which is going to be a, a China versus China match. This is going to be really exciting, already pumped for it, but for now we are uh, um, we are being replaced by, I think, Clutch, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think Clutch, Clutch and Rambo. Be, yep, Clutch and Rambo will be covering that match, as far as I know. See you guys a little bit later. This has been the WCG StarCraft 2 Grand Finals for 2012.